So now let's look at wireless networks. And first of all, we're going to look at the different connection methodologies um, and introduce those uh, with a why would you do it kind of uh, question. And then we're going to look at the GSM gateway box followed by the GSM gateway card. So this is the traditional way of doing things. Um, we have a PBX that you can see just here with some um, phones connected. And when they ring um, over the PSTN to other people, then that's fine. Uh, when they come to ring mobile phones, of course, it goes over the mobile, uh, sorry, through the PSTN to the mobile gateway. And it costs a large amount of money because the charge is made by the telco to connect up to the mobile network are usually quite high indicated by my unhappy face there. However, if we're to use a GSM gateway of one sort or another, we're then able to intelligently route mobile or cellular traffic straight over this gateway and straight onto the mobile network bypassing the PSTN. And so in effect, it turns out that we have a mobile to mobile call where the rates are generally lower. And of course, your monthly plan could have a number of minutes, like 600 minutes or 1,000 minutes built in. And so it's fairly common practice in various geographies to have GSM gateways hooked up to the PBX specifically to route the mobile calls over them. So the main aim is usually least cost routing or least cost routing. Um, and we can get business packages from our mobile providers that allow all users to phone each other for free. And so if we've got 10 mobile workers, we might buy an 11th SIM to put in a gateway and hook up to the PBX so that we can call all of our workers from the office for free. One thing to point out is that the caller ID could be an issue. If you're very choosy about what caller ID you present, you may not want to use this option because you'll find yourself presenting the caller ID of the SIM that you're going out over onto the mobile network. And we can use this technology to reduce roaming charges even when we go abroad ourselves because what we can do is leave our own SIMs at home connected to our PBX and have asterisk, as an example, uh, reroute the calls to us. So the call comes in on your SIM in your home country into your PBX and then your PBX can ring your um, office in the US or your pay-as-you-go mobile or whatever it might be. But you can see the point I'm making there that we can eliminate those nasty charges you get um, when you receive calls outside of your home country. So what about the multiple network option? We can also use a GSM gateway configuration to hedge our bets and put different SIMs in for different providers just in case one of those providers were to go down. Or um, we could have three SIMs that have all got 600 minutes on the same provider and just switch from one SIM to the, to the next when our um, built-in minutes are used up. So... Are we going to go for GSM cards or GSM gateway boxes? Let's look at that for a moment. Um, either of them are, of course, used to connect asterisk to a mobile network or any other IP PBX to a mobile network. We use them for least cost routing and roaming. The cards are a neat solution in that they go inside the server box. Um, but, of course, that makes them platform dependent in that our PCI bus connection has got a match in with the server that we're going into. And I, I don't know about you, but um, when I look around for servers, it's getting increasingly more difficult to find them with multiple PCI slots. Both types, of course, need an antenna. And the gateway box is, of course, platform independent. It just shows up as a SIP or maybe an analog device. And so it's... Um, easy for us to integrate and there at the bottom are a list of providers that do these different things. So let's move on and look at the next slide in the series where we're going to talk about GSM cards. Now the great thing as I've mentioned about the GSM cards is they integrate inside the box so that's a very positive thing about them. Um, however at the moment they're generally PCI cards and although the 
vendors of these are porting over to PCI Express, they're taking their time in doing it. But just inherently in the fact that they're cards, we expose ourselves to compatibility issues, not just the physical connectorization of whether it's a 3.3 volt or a 5 volt PCI connection, but the IRQ scenario inside the box and uh, many other gotchas that are out there. Um, these devices can usually connect um, to a number of SIMs and they're defined by the number of um, radio modules and, um, and the number of SIMs they have. It's not uncommon to find perhaps two radios and four SIMs um, in a scenario where we want to use up the minutes on individual SIMs. Um, we need to connect external antennas to them of course and we need to give them drivers so whether we're putting them into a Linux box or a Windows box we need drivers to make those cards work and that of course exposes us to more potential issues so we've not only got the issues of compatibility issue compatibility with the bus but we've also got issues around getting the card to work in the operating system as well the advantages are that they are neat um, they go inside the PBX platform and there's less interconnecting cables. We just have to run an antenna cable. That's about it. Disadvantage is that the platform compatibility is an essential component. And if you don't have that, you haven't got anything. And expansion may prove difficult because we'll need multiple slots. And as I already indicated, it's getting difficult to find servers with multiple PCI slots at the moment. Um, setup and configuration can be a difficulty for them too. So what about GSM gateways? Well, they're going to gateway out of uh, either an FXO or maybe an IP link into GSM and single and multi-SIM variants are available. Um, the one I've got my mouse pointer over right now, this small device here, the Portec device, is very simply SIP to GSM. It's a single unit, although you can buy them for two or four SIMs. Um, up here, we've got a unit that will take one SIM, but it's an analog connection. So you would have to have um, an FXS connection made to your PBX. Um, the small units generally have external PBX, uh, sorry, small units generally have external power supplies um, but these big units multi-sim units down at the bottom here um, they have uh, integral power supplies because as you can see they're rather large beasts that go into a 19 inch rack so on the GSM gateway front our advantages are that they're not platform dependent they're external boxes so we just hook them up via an FXO or, a, or FXS um, or SIP. Um, they're easily scalable. We just add more boxes. No special drivers are required because they're showing up to our PBX as a SIP or an analog or maybe PRI in the case of the large um, gateway uh, showing up over those interfaces. Um, disadvantages, well, we're just going to have a lot of wires running around because we've got the antenna cable, we've got the power cable, and we've got whatever connection we're going to make to Asterisk or our IP PBX.